Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Chris Gross, the CEO of Gabriel Media Group, the publishers of Networking Times and the founders of Networking University. We want to welcome you to our ongoing webinar series here at Networking University, where education changes everything. This evening, we're going to learn an awful lot about a tremendous benefit of having your own home-based business, and that is how to keep more of your commissions through the tax breaks that are set up in all various governmental systems. So, uh, having said that, our faculty member this evening is a distinguished individual, but before we talk about him, first I want to thank everyone for coming in here. Everyone knows here at Networking University, we're committed to helping you achieve the level of success you choose as you build your business in this exciting profession. We've had well in excess of, at this point, 200,000 student registrations over the years, over the past decade and, and more at Networking University. It's very clear that we are fulfilling needs exist in this fine profession. Now, for those of you who have not been here before, we set this up to be very neutral. There's a no recruiting policy that we've established here um, because we realize everyone's already in whatever business they've chosen. And doing it this way, we've set it up to be a clean environment for the savvy networkers out there among you who realize that our faculty members are paid as much as $10,000 for an hour of their time. They're shuttled all over the world. And the best part about that is the savvy networkers realize they can bring their entire teams in here and take advantage of the university and get the same kind of quality information presented for them. Those same savvy networkers will meet up afterwards and, and describe with their team exactly how to put into use the information that was provided by our faculty at the webinar. So, the savvy networkers, sign your whole team up, come over here every week. And by the way, folks, if you can't make it, which happens sometimes, we understand because something comes up, don't worry. If you're signed up, we'll send you a link so you can check out the webinar afterwards. So having said that, we're going to talk a little bit about our faculty member this evening. Now, this individual has been around the networking space for, I guess, close to 35 years. Hard to believe that's the case, but uh, he seems so young. But nevertheless, he has been helping the uh, folks here at Networking Times and Networking University since we started Networking Times, which is 13 years ago, and Networking University for the past 11 years. Right from the very, very beginning, he was there as a contributor and making a huge difference. He's, uh, he's also been, uh, I guess, all over the world uh, educating people. He's done things with uh, Schwarzkopf and Donald Trump and all these people. He's um, written a number of fabulous books on lowering your taxes big time and financial freedom big time. And he's just a, an all-around expert. He worked as a lawyer for the Internal Revenue Service, and in that capacity, he trained the agents how to enforce the code. He then became a certified public accountant, worked at one of the big uh, eight or big five accounting firms back in the day and uh, had a chance to look at his parents' tax returns and understood why he never had a vacation as a kid because his parents, who were entrepreneurs, actually didn't do as well as they could in taking advantage of the tax codes. And so he devoted himself from that point onward to helping small businessmen and women all over. So I want to thank him for his contribution, and I want to give a very warm welcome to a good friend of mine, Mr. Sandy Botkin. Sandy, how are you doing today? Hello, Chris. Thank you. It's been terrific. And i got to tell you how honored I am to be participating for a long time with uh, with Networking University. It's really been a great, great organization. And I'm, I'm also very honored, by the way, folks, to be lecturing to you, self-employed individuals. I mean, heck, my parents were self-employed. I'm self-employed. So, you know, I really admire that entrepreneurial mentality of taking a little more risk in order to make a lot more money. Now, I do want to emphasize a couple things. Uh, I'm going to be moving very quickly. This is sort of a 30,000-foot overview of what's in my books and materials. So you really want to take some notes. You want to get a pen and paper because I am going to move. That's secondly, I'm not going to tell you a lot of jokes. Well, no, it's what you want. I can tell you this is not going to meet your needs. You need to hang up. However, if you will give me a focused 50 minutes, I'll put enough money in your pocket to put a couple thousand dollars every year in your pocket for the rest of your life and to start putting you on the path of being bulletproof from the government so you'll never have to worry about an IRS audit again. How's that? I've had that peace of mind. And that's going to be my goal. Now, I have a couple of questions I want to ask you. You ever have a situation, and by the way, I'm going to be saying some startling things, and that's why I'm going to give you some of my background, because there's some things that would be very surprising. The first thing is, have you ever had a situation where you went out, charged something, and you found you were charged more than you expected? 
Or maybe you were charged with something you didn't even buy. You ever had that happen? Happened to me. I was in Italy and I charged the dinner with my wife and I came back and I got the bill, got a hundred dollars, except I got charged twice for the same bill. I was irate. I immediately contacted my credit card company and demanded a refund. Now my question to you is this, what did you do? Did you just let it go? Or did you get as ticked as I was and demand a refund? Well, I want you to hold on to that feeling because I'm about to make it a lot worse. What if I were to tell you, you are overpaying your taxes and, and I'll prove that to you to the tune of thousands, not $80 or a $100 credit card charge. I'm talking thousands. Would you like to know about it? Of course you would. You know, one of the interesting things about taxes is you're going to spend more on taxes than you will for food, housing, transportation, and, cl and clothing combined. Well, the good news I'm going to show you is there's a nice, easy solution where you won't stop overpaying your taxes and put thousands of dollars in your pockets and have the right documentation so you will never have to worry about an IRS audit again. Now, I want to give you an overview about who I am because I am going to be saying some surprising and maybe shocking things. First of all, I'm a CPA, I'm a tax attorney, and I'm a former trainer of IRS attorneys nationwide. So if you think of an IRS agent as a rat, I guess that makes me head rodent. I've been lecturing for over a quarter of a century with my company called the Tax Reduction Institute. I have I've been a featured tax coach with Donald Trump at the Tony Robbins Wealth Seminars. I'm a best-selling author of a book, Lower Your Taxes Big Time, and a second book, which is garnering some terrific reviews, Achieve Financial Freedom Big Time. And I do encourage all of you to get those two books. In fact, Lower Your Taxes has a great chapter, Why You'd Be Brain Dead Not to Have a Home-Based Business, which I think you'll find very useful in recruiting. So I do recommend those books. And I've been a guest expert on a lot of places, Fox, CNN, CBS, and so on. And I'm not saying this to impress you. I just want you to know I know what I'm talking about. Now, here's the first shocking thing. There was a study done, I think by Harvard, where they wanted to know what percentage of people at age 65 could retire with the same standard of living they had before retirement. What was shocking was the answer. The answer was 4% which means 96% of all Americans have to either continue working, live on some form of charity, or reduce their standard of living. And this was an old study, by the way. Here's my point. If taxes are the number one expense in this country, and you can get those down legally, you think maybe you can cure the retirement woes for yourself and everybody else you know? Sure. But so how are we going to change that? We're going to be talking about some amazing tax breaks some things I bet you didn't even know about, and... We're going to show you exactly what kind of meticulous records you need. So even if you get audited by the smartest IRS auditor, you'll be in great shape. Now, I got to tell you, in my 30 years of lecturing, I found that probably 99 plus percent of home-based business owners meet one of two dilemmas. They're either not taking all the deductions they should be taking, or they're taking more deductions, still not taking them all, but they don't have the right documentation, which, which means they're leaving themselves open to tremendous penalties. And even worse, and this is something that's very important, you have as much as a 700% more likely chance of being selected for an audit. So having the right records isn't just nice. It's, it's absolutely critical for anyone in business. Because in tax law, and here's the important point, you are guilty until you prove your innocence. Okay? And that's the important point here. And by the way, somebody asked me, will this webinar be recorded? The answer is yes. So there will be a, re a recording. You will get a link to the replay. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to sound kind of funny, but it's true. The government is the biggest bookie in North America because they're betting on you big time to succeed in business. And why? Because the government knows something that they've learned a long time ago. From small acorns come big trees. For example, Apple Computer didn't start with 200,000 employees. It started out of Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs' garage. The big internet giant, Amazon, didn't start big. It started out of Jeff Bezos' uh, garage. So the government passes good tax laws for you to be in business. In fact, what's interesting is that we really have two tax systems. And when I say that, a lot of people think, oh, sure, one for rich and one for poor. And that's close, but not quite right. There's one to make you rich and there's one to make you poor. The one to make you poor is the one designed for employees or for those who are self-employed who don't know the rules. Because if you don't know the rules, you're just as bad off as an employee. Because if you're an employee, you're taxed on dollar one. You don't get that many deductions to begin with, and any deductions you do get have to exceed a high threshold to get an employee business expense as a deduction. But if you're self-employed, that's the one, and know the rules, by the way, that's the one to make you rich. Because if you're self-employed, you can write off part of your house, your spouse, the equivalent 
of your kids' education and weddings. You can set up a pension that makes any government plan look small by comparison. You get all your deductions before the government gets one dime to drink. I mean, the tax benefits of being in business are just enormous. And that's why the government creates these deductions, which will generate cash that you never have to pay back. I want you to think about that for a minute. What the government is giving you is free financing for your business that you never have to pay back for you and for every one of your distributors. If, if I think if people really understood this, they would have, everybody would have huge downlines. I don't think people really appreciate how important this is. Now, let me give you a good example. Mary. Mary is either an employee or someone who just doesn't know the rules. And she has the following expenses. Cell phone. Now, that's normally not deductible as an employee. She pays rent, which is not deductible. She has mortgage interest, and it's deductible as only as an itemized deduction. Car expense, like gas, repairs, insurance, normally not deductible as an employee. She goes out to restaurants. I'm sure employees do that a lot. Unfortunately, it's not deductible. She entertains a lot. She likes to go to movies, golf, plays, not deductible. She has medical expenses, which under Obamacare, now is higher. You have to exceed 10% of your adjusted gross earnings to even get one dime of medical expense. And other expenses, which are normally uh, have to exceed a threshold. But here's my point. Wouldn't it be nice if you could take these exact same expenses, which are totally That's exactly what you're able to do. I totally non-deductible, and now personal, because in business, I want you to call this concept redirected tax dollars. Here's my point. Let's say you're paying eight or ten or twelve or a thousand more of that to the government, and so I'm putting federal and state. Wouldn't it be wiser to take that same eight or ten thousand dollars, and instead of giving it to the government, taking a substantial part of that and subsidizing it, using it to subsidize your business every single year? Think about that. And, and by the way, it is your choice, and I'm using that, that term correctly, your choice with proper planning, you can actually take a substantial part of the money you're already giving the government and use it to subsidize your business each and every year. Maybe that's why so many uh, people are starting home-based businesses these days, money smart folks. Now, here's another, this, I, meant, I said I was going to cover some shocking things, and here's one of the first shocking things. Who are the biggest tax cheats in North America? Do you know? I bet you'd never guess. Here's the answer. <clears throat> Business owners cheat themselves out of literally billions of dollars in deductions. In fact, we estimate that small business owners overpay their taxes to the tune of billions. And I'm not the only one who's noticed this, by the way. It was just an announcement by John Potter, who's president of the American Institute of CPAs, said the same thing. Even the government accounting office said Americans are overpaying their taxes to the tune of billions. And even worse, over 95% of those in home-based business don't think they overpay. Well, that's even more shocking. Now, you might wonder, why is that? There's three reasons. First reason is lack of knowledge. You don't know what you don't know. The second reason is procrastination. You know, I have found if, you don't have, if I don't set an alarm to wake up in the morning, I may not get up for the appointment. Same thing is true in taxes, in a sense. If you don't have something triggering you to, to write down your mileage, your entertainment, your questions, kind of like a little birdie whispering in your ear, what happens? You don't do it. And if you don't have the documentation, it's, it, you can't take the deduction or you'll be hit with huge penalties. And the third reason is fear of the IRS. And that's also stupid because you don't need to be fearful because if you know what you're doing, there's nothing IRS can do to hurt you. They won't do anything, in fact. Now, there's a couple of cash drain myths that I want to share with you. And one of them causes more people to lose money than probably any single mistake you'll ever see. And yet it's only seven words long. And those seven words are, my accountant takes care of my taxes. And by the way, I have a similar myth. My spouse takes care of my taxes. If you learn anything, learn that. I equate this with a doctor taking care of our body. Wouldn't it be great if we can eat all the cholesterol and all the fattening foods, and once a year we go to a doctor's office and we get one of these rotor rooter jobs? Wouldn't that be nice? Another big myth, my mechanic takes care of my car. Those of you who have ever owned an older Jaguar would appreciate that myth. By the way, Jaguars were interesting. They were the only cars in the world that had more vertical mileage than horizontal. I'll let you think about that one. The point is, accountants are essential. Every person in business should have an accountant to do financial statements, to do a bunch of things. They're, they're, they're required, for, they're essential for a lot of reasons. But if you don't have the right documentation, if you don't have the right knowledge, there's only so much they can do for you. It's got to be a partnership effort. Does that make sense? You know, I was giving a big maker seminar. Some of you may, may have seen me with Donald Trump and General Schwarzkopf when he was alive and a bunch of other people. And I had a guy come up to me and said, Mr. Botkin, I loved your program. There's only one problem. I don't pay taxes. I get a refund every year. 
I couldn't believe he said that to me. So I actually ran the numbers. And here's what I found. Somebody who makes $50,000 a year of net taxable income, it's net of all your deductions and exemptions and everything, in an average state, pays $12,917 in taxes. And that includes federal, state, Social Security, and Medicare. Now, estimated tax is normally more than what you owe to the government. And the reason, for two reasons, actually. One, the government wants to make sure they get their money. But the second reason is if you don't have the right, well, let's put it this way. The second reason is even if you get a refund, you're feeling better, right? But even though you're getting that refund, you're still leaving some of that money with the government. In this example, somebody who makes $50,000 a year of net taxable income is paying 25.8% of what they're making to the government. Well, and we're not talking about Donald Trump here, by the way. We're talking about a hardworking single person make, netting out 50000 a year. Somebody who makes 100000 a year pays 32.4% of what they make to the government, and somebody who makes $250,000 a year pays almost 38% of what they make to the government. So I can assure you, not only are you paying taxes, but you're paying a lot of them. If you didn't realize it, realize it now. Now, here's another big myth. I have a home-based business, Sandy. What kind of deductions and fringe benefits can I set up for myself that, say, a, a Fortune 500 company can, can, uh, can they do uh, that, or they, that I can't do, for example? And here's the interesting point. You can set up exactly the same fringe benefits, exactly the same deductions that a Fortune 500 company gets. I know that sounds strange, but it's true. If you get my book, Lower Your Taxes Big Time, I have 130 pages on fringe benefits. And just about every one of those uh, fringe benefits also applies to you as a self-employed person, maybe except stock options. And even that applies if you're incorporated. So, I mean, I mean it's the same thing. Now, here's another interesting myth. I'm only working my home-based business part-time. What kind of deductions do I get? Answer, you get exactly the same deductions that a full-time worker gets. Exactly. Nothing changes. Now, here's a myth that I really don't know where this came from, and this is widespread. Sandy, I'm not making any money yet. Why do I need to know about tax planning? Well, I made very little money. Why do I need to know about tax planning? First of all, there's something I want you to write down. The amount of money that you make is immaterial for tax planning to help you. The amount of money you make is immaterial for tax planning to help you. And here's why. Remember I said the government's the biggest bookie? They subsidize you in three different ways. The first way is that if your business generates a loss, or maybe your spouse has a, has a business, or if your spouse has earnings, that loss can be used against any form of income you have for you and your family, you and your spouse. In, uh, that includes interest, dividends, wages, rents, pensions, gains, earnings, anything. So let's take an example. Let's say you make or your spouse makes $50,000 in a job. Your business generates a $10,000 loss. You only pay taxes on 40, the net. Now, let's say that's the first way they subsidize you. Now, the second way is let's assume those, that loss exceeds your whole income for the year. You're a single parent, and it exceeds your whole income. Here's the second way they subsidize you. You can carry back all business losses two years and get a refund in the U.S. for the last two years of taxes that you pay. You actually get a check. If there's any Canadians on, you get a three-year carryback. It's even better for you Canadians. So that means you actually can carry back all your losses against taxable income and what taxes that you paid for the last two years. And if you upset all that money, you then get uh, subsidized the third way. You can carry forward all business losses up to 20 years and offset the next 20 years of earnings. So you never lose a properly documented business deduction. And it's sad because I see so many people not coming to tax seminars thinking, oh, well, they don't make enough money. And it's irrelevant because if you have a loss, it will just increase the loss, which will increase your refunds and things you can carry over for the future. It's just as important. All the government cares about, by the way, I just want to mention, is you document your, your activities correctly and you run your business like a business, which means you're trying to make money. They don't care if you make money, believe it or not. All they care about is you're trying to make money. Now, here's an interesting question. Let's say I gave you a choice between getting a $17,000 raise every year for 10 years, like getting a check, or I'm going to somehow wave my magic wand and save you $10,000 in taxes every year for 10 years, which would you take? Believe it or not, if you pick the 17, you'd be wrong. Because by the time you pay federal tax, state, uh, Social Security, uh, Medicare on that 17, you're left with less, in many cases, than $10,000. Here's a good example. How would you like to get the equivalent of free gas? Would you like that? 
Well, I think I just paid uh, five three fifty a gallon. I think that's about what I just paid. How it depends how to do it. By writing off your car, that's effectively what you're getting. There are two methods of writing off a car. One is the IRS method. People don't usually collect tax things. So the other is the actual method. The IRS is the more conservative approach, and that's what we're going to use. Now, IRS in 2014, and this varies from year to year, maybe may a little bit more next year, gives you 56 cents a mile for every mile you drive for business. And by the way, who determines how many miles we drive for business? Does the government or do we? And the answer is we do. And how do we do it? From a tax tracker or tax organizer. They also give you 30, 23 and a half cents a mile for medical and moving every time you go to the doctor, every time you go to the dentist, every time you take your kids to the doctor. You should be claiming 23, keep track of 20 of your medical mileage month because you can deduct 23 and a half cents a mile. And if you're not doing that, you're potentially overpaying your taxes. Now, here's something that a lot of Americans miss, and I don't know why this is. IRS gives you 14 cents a mile for charity. Now, again, you've got to keep track of that charitable mileage. So, for example, I have a friend of mine who goes to his church choir. He goes to choir practice and performs in various events. All right, he should be claiming 14 cents a mile round trip. You think he's doing it? No. And there's, in my neighborhood, a lot of moms sell Girl Scout, they drive their daughters to sell Girl Scout cookies. Uh, I know that because they all come to my house because they know I like Samoas. Those moms should be claiming 14 cents a mile driving their daughter around. You think the moms are doing it? No. They're overpaying their taxes. Now, how do you get gas for the equivalent of free? Watch this. Let's say tomorrow you drive 20 miles for business. IRS gives you 56 and a half cents a mile for an $11.20 deduction. Now, a deduction is not cash. Your cash is equal to whatever tax bracket you're in times the deduction. And by the way, a little bit about tax brackets. A lot of times people ask me, well, what does tax bracket mean? Is that the average of what you pay? What does it mean? Tax bracket is not the average. What it means is what you pay on the last dollar you make to the federal and state governments. And if you get a deduction, it's how much of that deduction comes back as a refund. In fact, there's an old song that we CPAs sing. You don't want to hear me sing, but the words are great. Everything is cheaper if you get a deduction. Cha-cha-cha. <laughs> so let's say you're in the 33% tax bracket, which, by the way, is the average for most Americans. It could be as high as 54%, but the average is 33%. So if you multiply 33 by $11.20 deduction, that gives you a $3.69 cash savings in your pocket for that one day alone. So if gas is $3.50 a gallon and you get 20 miles to the gallon, not only are you getting gas for free, but you're actually making $0.19 cents, 19 cents a gallon. Everybody see this? And by the way, I want to emphasize that the corollary is also true. If you don't decide, don't keep track of your mileage, if you don't have a mileage log of some type, then it's costing you at least $3.69 every day that you're not doing this. You do that 30 days a month, that's $110 a month you just threw out the window in cash. And that's the IRS method, which is the more conservative approach. The actual method is really is you, know, you take a percentage of your gas, oil, insurance, wash, wax, depreciation. So let's say that you drive 20,000 miles for business, out of, you put on 40,000 total miles on that car, you're, you're, you'd be able to write off 50% of all these things. And by the way, who determines how many miles we drive for business? How many, what's our total mileage? We do, from our tax tracker and tax organizer. Now, there's something I want to mention for those, especially those of you who use the IRS method. The IRS method is in lieu of gas, oil, insurance, wash, wax, depreciation. But you do get some things in addition. You do get tolls and parking. You do get sales tax to the extent you use your car for business, and you deduct interest to the extent you use your car for business. All of you who use the IRS method, check on whether your accountant gave you a deduction for the sales tax and the interest. Many accountants were not aware of this. If you didn't get it, you can file amended tax returns, federal and state, for up to three years you've been in business to claim the deduction. I recently met someone who just got back a little over a $6,000 refund as a result of this one concept. This is no small deal, folks. Here's another tip. What kinds of documentation do you need to bulletproof your car? You need three things. One, you need the beginning and end years odometer reading. You don't need a free trip, just beginning and end years odometer reading. Number two, you need a mileage journal showing how much mileage you used uh, for each trip. What was the mileage for each trip? And finally, most importantly, you need an explanation of the business purpose for each trip you took. If you leave out any of this, you are not in compliance, and you are throwing out of the window about $110 or more per month. It could be as much as a couple hundred a month 
by not doing this. Now, here's a hot tip. You know, there's an old saying among us lawyers in Washington, D.C., where there's a will, there's a lawyer. You know, a lot of times you do things, you go for personal stuff, like taking kids tutoring or going to football games or seeing your mom. Now, that's normally personal. That's normally non-deductible. So here's what I suggest. Figure out whether you have a, a business stop you can make near your mom. Maybe you can go to an opportunity meeting or go to a potential prospect or potential distributor or a current distributor that you have. By doing that and then seeing your mom, a substantial part of that trip now becomes deductible. And here's another thing. Your mom doesn't have to live near you. Let's say your mom lives in Hawaii. Here's a tip. How about putting an ad in the paper for potential distributors and, and interview some people? By doing that, flying to Hawaii to meet potential distributors and now seeing your mom, you do it correctly, that trip could potentially become deductible, even though you went to see your mom. See, if you're not doing that, you're overpaying your taxes. Now, I want to mention something else about cars now. You know, generally, uh, the tax law changed, and all you can write off is $3,160 in the first year for depreciation on a car. However, there were a couple winners that were kept in the Internal Revenue Code. The two winners are new and used trucks and new and used qualified SUVs. Now, what's a new used truck? What's a qualified truck and a qualified SUV? You got to meet the two rules. Rule one is you want is you want to have a, a, a truck chassis, and rule two is that the truck and the SUV has to have a gross vehicle weight, which means carrying weight, of over six thousand pounds. And how do you know if you have a gross vehicle weight of over six thousand pounds? I'll show you an easy way. Open up the driver's door. Look in the door jam. There's a metal plate showing gross and net vehicle weight. If you've got a truck chassis and that gross vehicle weight number is over six thousand pounds, you meet the rules. And if you meet the rules, here's the benefit. You get to deduct $25,000 as an expense election on the business use of that vehicle. Plus, you can depreciate what's left over. So instead of being limited to $3,160, you get to write off $25,000 of the business use plus depreciate the vehicle in addition. That's the benefit. So who are the winners? New and used trucks, new and used SUVs. Okay? By the way, a little, word to the, a little interesting factoid. The BMW SUV, I think the X3, has a gross vehicle weight of 6,002 pounds. You think that was coincidental? <laughs> now let's talk about entertainment. The government allows you to deduct 50% of your meals and 50% of your friend's meal for anyone who's a potential prospect in your business. So my question is, who are potential clients in your business? Who can, be, who can give you referrals or be customers? Are your best friends potential clients? Sure. How about your adult family members? Sure. How about um, two networks? I've never met two home-based business owners get together and not talk business. So let me ask you a question that I asked a former IRS commissioner. If everyone is a potential prospect, how can you ever have a non-deductible lunch with someone? You can't. And if you're not writing off almost every meal you have with someone, I would like to suggest that you are leaving money on the table. You are overpaying your taxes. And you don't have to pay for them. You can split the bill, too. Now, what kinds of documentation do you need? You need the four W's and an H written down in a tracker. You need who? What? I asked for referrals. Where? I went to, I, I entertained at home, or I went to Outback Steakhouse. When? The date? How much? And by doing this, you are bulletproof. You don't have to worry about an IRS audit again. And I want to emphasize something about this entertaining. You know, entertaining is just the same way as people who advertise on television. I'm sure you've seen a lot of people advertising on, on Super Bowl and World Series and all this other stuff, the Olympics. You know, these companies know, no matter, no matter what they're spending, they know that not everyone is going to buy their product. Now, your form of advertising is entertaining. Your form of advertising is viral marketing. It's the same thing. And it pays to advertise because, one, you're promoting your business in pursuit of a profit. But, two, you're offering proof that you're running your business like a business. So entertaining is just as deductible and same type of thing as if you were uh, advertising on television. The only difference is the government lets you write off 50% of it. That's the only difference. Now, there's something called associated entertainment. You probably never heard of it, but it's in the Internal Revenue Code. And I want you to write this down. And then I want you to put an equal sign and write down the word fun. This is where you're going to a movie. This is where you're going to a play. This is where you're going to a ballet. And you're deducting that fun, so you're having twice as much fun. IRS says that you can write off 50% of your fun. And if you happen to also pay for your friend, you can even write off 50% of their fun. If, and this is IRS talking, not Sandy Bodkin talking, if you talk business in the same 24-hour day as the fun. Does that give you enough time? <laughs> so let's take an example. Let's say I'm talking business with Chris, 
and I go to, I go to his uh, home. We talk business, and then we drive to a football game. Is that talking business within tw- same 24-hour day? Yes. Let's say Chris and I go out to a restaurant. We talk business, and Chris says, well, Sandy, let's go play golf. So I tell him, okay, show me how to play. I'll go with you. So right after we, we talk business at the restaurant, we go play golf. Is that talking business within the same 24-hour day? Yes. Here's the problem. Who has the burden of proof of showing that we, t- play, we talk business? Does the government or do we? And the answer is we do, and how do we do it from our tax tracker? You know, I want to emphasize how good these tax laws are. I said they were good tax laws. I wasn't kidding. You can literally eat away your taxes with no limit, by the way. You can play away your taxes. You can golf away your taxes. I mean, it's just tremendous. Now, what kinds of documentation do you need? You need to have something triggering you to eliminate procrastination with the four W's in an H and a tracker. Who, what, where, when, how much? And by the way, I have people who call me up on TV all the time. And they said, Mr. Botkin, uh, you know, you make such a big deal about having a tracker. Will the government really believe everything I say in my tax tracker or tax organizer? And the answer is yes. Unless they can show fraud, they will believe everything you say in your tax tracker. Your tax tracker is your audit insurance against IRS. You know, all of you have homeowner's insurance. Why do you have that? You don't use that every year. Because if you don't, if you have a big fire or a big home uh, catastrophe and you don't have a, a insurance, that is a catastrophe. Why do you have car insurance? You don't use that every year. If you did, you'd be suspended. Why? Because you get into an accident without it. It's a catastrophe. It's a huge problem. This, your tax tracker is audit insurance. It keeps the government off your back. And unlike homeowners or car insurance, it pays you every single year. And it pays you very well, by the way. It, it is not something that's nice to have. It is an essential thing for anyone in business. Absolutely essential. You're in business. You've got to run it like a business. It's even one of the factors that IRS looks at is the whether you're running it like a business. All right, now let's talk about a home office. I'll bet you heard that if you claim a home office, that isn't worth it. You're going to be audited. Would it surprise you to hear that in 1999, Congress liberalized the home office rules, particularly for home-based businesses? Now, why would they do that if they didn't want you to take it? And in addition, I have a friend of mine who did a study, and he found that people who claim a home office deduction versus people who don't claim a home office deduction have the same chance of audit. So I'm here to tell you that if you're eligible and you don't claim a home office deduction, which you probably have it, are eligible, you are crazy, absolutely crazy. And let's take an example of how valuable this is. Let's say your home, and this is a typical floor plan of your home, and you use one bedroom for business, and that home represents that bedroom represents one-eighth of your total square feet. And by the way, there's nothing magical about this one-eighth number. I'm just picking an example. In your house, it can be more. It can be less. I'm just picking a number. But what does that mean? That means that one-eighth of the utilities become deductible. Now, before, without a home office, you couldn't deduct your utilities. But now you can. That's an example of redirected tax dollars. You're taking money you're already spending. This is money you're already spending and making it deductible. One-eighth of the interest becomes business interest. Now, that's important because that will reduce your Social Security and Medicare that you're paying on your self-employed business. One-eighth of your taxes become property taxes, business taxes. One-eighth of the uh, the house can be depreciated. By the way, that's no small number. I have seen that number alone be tens of thousands of dollars. Now, I had some uh, home-based business people say, Sandy, I'm renting my house. No problem. In this example, one-eighth of the rent would be deductible. One-eighth of the maid service, the alarm service, the insurance, the lawn care, the repairs. I mean, we're talking about a lot of money here, folks. We're talking tens of thousands of dollars. All right, so what are the rules? There are three rules you need to know. Rule one is you have to use an exclusive portion of a room for business. It doesn't have to be a whole room if you don't want, but an exclusive portion of a room. Now, here's the problem. How do you prove that you used an exclusive portion of a room two years ago for business. I bet your accountant didn't tell you, and here's the answer. So now you're gonna know this. Take a picture of the home office. Date the photograph, but store it. Don't send it in with your tax return. So you wanna show that everything is in there is exclusive. Secondly, you wanna also show that you use your home at least 45 minutes or more per day for your business, four to five days a week. It's much more important to show you do it regularly than once every two weeks, say, for two for 12 hours. And this is where your tracker or appointment book comes in handy, what you're doing. And finally, and this one's easy, this is the second, third, third test, is that your home has to be your principal place of business, which means 
that you do the majority of your management or administrative work from your home for your business, which I'm sure you do, and you don't have another office where you do substantial administrative work, which I'm sure is the case. By meeting these three tests, you're now eligible for the home office deduction, which is worth tens of thousands of dollars. Now, one question I get a lot of is, Sandy, I've got a, uh, kids in college. Is that deductible? And the answer is no. Um, I want to pay for my daughter's wedding. Is that deductible? No. How about room and board or a car for my kids? No. Or books. How would you like to be able to deduct the equivalent of every single thing I just said, if blessed by the IRS? Would you like that? Would that pay for your hour here? In fact, I'll probably pay for every course you take at networking and university. You know, I've always said you get one idea in taxes, it's worth thousands. Wish people understood that. And here's your idea. Hire your kids in your business or work on your rental property. If you pay them a reasonable wage and they use that money down the road to pay for their own tuition or their own wedding or their own room and board or their own car or their own books, aren't you in essence getting a deduction for those things? It's the same money. But you went from non-deductible tuition to deductible wages. And kids can, what can kids do? Lick envelopes, address envelopes, work on the computer, shred documents, um, clean the business office, deliver signs. I mean, all kinds of things. Do your tax tracker for you. Fill it out for you. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Now, I'll give you an example. You know, if you know what I do in my life, you can do the same thing. My daughter uh, majored in digital design, which is like web design. And at the, end, at, at the beginning of her junior year, she was able to do internships. And I, I needed a new website. So I, I decided to price out what a new website would be. And I didn't go to one of these free websites. They're garbage. So I went to our good firm and to and they give me bells and whistles. And it was a pretty expensive thing. So I asked my daughter if she can do my site for something less than what the other web firm would have charged me. And she said yes. I was able to pay her an amount equal to about two years of tuition, which she then used that money to pay before, two years of books. I was able to save tens of thousands of dollars. I hired my son to work on my rental properties, help mow the lawns in the properties, paint the properties, and he used that money to help pay his tuition. If you're not doing this, you are overpaying your taxes. I can't say that enough times. Remember what I said at the very beginning. Most home-based business people, and we're talking 99%, are either not taking all the deductions they should be taking, or they're taking deductions without the right documentation. You know, hopefully I've convinced you to, one, start keeping meticulous records, and two, learn more about tax deductions. Remember, the more you know, the less you owe. And by the way, somebody uh, said, well, wait a minute, Sandy, what about credit card statements? Don't they work alone? IRS agents love people who think this way, because think again, you need more information than the credit card provides. Because in tax law, you are guilty until you prove your innocence. You have to prove all your deductions were business related and you're following the rules. And I want to emphasize something. The key to getting that redirected tax income is two things. One, you're running your business like a business and not like a hobby. And I got a whole video on what that is and what you have to look for. It's in my books, Lower Your Taxes Big Time. But I, I want to emphasize something here. You don't need to make money. I know the government, in fact, government doesn't even care if you make money. What the government cares about is that you're a good bet, which means you're trying to make money. You're having an accountant. You're keeping your, uh, a financial statement. You have a business plan. You're going to training. You're doing a bunch of things that the government looks at as pe that people do to try to make money. And the second thing is you're tracking your expenses in accordance with IRS standards. They're not asking much for their subsidy. They're really not. And, and remember that you have as much as a 700% more likely chance of being audited. So keeping the right records is not something that's nice to have. It's not even something that's, that's very good. It's essential to have. All right, I'm going to turn this back to, I have some more I want to do, but I want to turn this back to Chris with some questions. So, Chris, let me turn this back to you. Okay, well, so far so good, folks. We've learned a ton in a very brief time. I'm sure that uh, you appreciate that as well. So if you haven't got your questions in, because I'm sure you've got some by now, email those to questions, Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N-S, -E -S, questions. That's the best part of the webinar. It's yet to come. Get your, your questions answered by an expert in tax and in tax law. So uh, take advantage of that. Now, I know that uh, there's something special that, that Sandy's put together. He'll talk a little bit about that while waiting for these questions to come in. So pay attention to this, and uh, we'll have the question and answers coming right up. Hang in for that. Okay, thanks very much. Sandy, we're back. Yeah. First of all, folks, you know, we talked about the documentation that you have to have. You know, a lot of this can be very onerous. 
So how would you like a personal assistant? Wouldn't that be great if you can get a, an accountant 24 hours a day, seven days a week to do all your mileage logs for you? You don't have to do it. To keep all your receipts in such a way so you never have to lose them and keep your tax diary for entertainment and travel questions for you. Now, you'd probably say, oh, yeah, that'd be great. It's only one problem. The accountants are 300 bucks an hour. In fact, even if I can find somebody really cheap, I still have to pay a minimum wage, which is like 10 bucks an hour. What if you can get somebody like that for pennies a day? Not pennies an hour, pennies a day. Would you be willing to do that? Let me introduce you to the best tax assistant you are ever going to meet. It's called TaxBot. It is a cute little creature. It has a four and a half star rating in the App Store. TaxBot was designed by me to be simple. I grew up in, a, in an area where I didn't have computers. We didn't even have calculators. We had slide rules. So I know that I want something simple. If it's simple, easy, and fast, I'll do it. If it's not, I won't. And I designed TaxBot with two buttons. You can't get simpler than that. Basically, the way TaxBot works is you snap pictures of receipts, you answer simple questions, and you are insured to be IRS compliant. So let's take an example of how it works. Let's say I'm going to have a lunch with Chris. I click on Add Expense. The minute I do that, I get a whole category of expenses, all of which are editable and customizable. Now, one of those expenses are meals. I click on Meals. The minute I do that, TaxBot will automatically pop up on my smartphone. By the way, TaxBot works on the iPhone, the Droid, the iPad, the Droid tablet, and of course the web. So it works on all of those things. So Meal automatically clicks on all the questions that IRS requires. What, why, how much, where, when, who, and you are bulletproof. How will that feel, okay? Now there's an additional line here. It says entity. What's good about, interesting about TaxBot is that TaxBot works on up to three different businesses, three different cars simultaneously. So, for example, it'll work for you. If your spouse is the distributor, it'll work for them. If your kids have a business, it'll work for them. You can use it on three businesses, three cars, on one account. You don't need separate accounts for each person. I want to emphasize that. Also, TaxBot works on different devices. If you have an iPhone and my wife happens to have a Droid, it works on both devices with the same account. Now, in addition to, to having all the tax questions in front of you, and by the way, you might wonder, why did I do that? Because that eliminates procrastination, because it'll pop up right in front of you. You'll never have to worry about an audit or forgetting things. But in addition, TaxBot has an integrated camera. You know, I'm finding one of another big problem is receipts are fading with a thermally treated paper. You can take a picture of the receipt, click Save, all the documentation will wirelessly go onto the web. So if you lose your phone, you don't lose your data. I want to emphasize that. Now, in addition, TaxBot has an integrated mileage tracker with a GPS system. You're going to love this. So let's say you're going to a, a distributor or an opportunity meeting. You click on Start Mileage Tracking. It'll ask you, do you want to do that? You'll say yes. TaxBot will follow you around. The minute you get to your location, you click End Trip. Now, what happens? The beginning address of where you turned on TaxBot will automatically show up on your phone. The ending address of where you turned on TaxBot will automatically show up on your phone. The date will automatically show up on your phone. The mileage will automatically show up on your phone. It'll even do it round trip for you if you want, or you can turn that feature off. All you type in is why. That's all you do, the explanation. You then click save. The, the, what will happen is all of this goes up on the web. It'll summarize all your expenses for you and then give you a percentage between business and personal mileage automatically with the press of one button, the word reports. That's all you have to do. And you can download things to your hard drive or email it to your accountant. I mean, you don't get easier than that. So you can forget all those mileage clipboards. Now, in the front of TaxBot, it will actually show you in real time how much you're generating. This is my partner. This is an actual picture of my partner's uh, iPhone as of August 20th, $15,000, almost $69 as of August 20th. Uh, let's see. What is that? Uh, it's about 1900 a month. This is important for a lot of reasons. A lot of leaders are putting their downline on this. Why? Because when people see three, five hundred, six hundred, eight hundred a month more, they don't quit because this is how much it costs them if they quit the business. So the attrition has gone down enormously. In addition, TaxBot has some great technology. It will actually look. You register a bank account or a credit card, and it's going to look for charges that aren't on TaxBot and ask you, do you want to add it? Is it a business expense? So you'll have everything in one place. TaxBot's kind of like a BMW. There's more under the hood than it appears. With TaxBot, all your records are encrypted. 
They're backed up in multiple high security data centers in several different locations in several different cities. So you don't have to worry about losing your data. I don't care if there's a flood. By the way, you also get tremendously powerful reporting for your accountant. For example, you get this graph. There's a many, many graphs actually you can get, but you have this graph, this is a sample of it, which shows how much you're spending in every category. So you can budget and see how much you're exactly you're spending in every, on everything. You'll be ready for the toughest IRS audit. You know, I gotta tell you, when tax season came around, I, I always felt like this, and I'm sure you do too. Today with TaxBot, I press one button, the word report, and this is the way I and my wife look. They're smiling. And by the way, we, we have found, we have done some studies that, you, that people can use TaxBot in less than two minutes a day. That's the average. In fact, the average is actually about, two, about one and a half minutes. So it, it is tremendously easy to use. Now, in addition to all of this, you get me. TaxBot comes with probably one of the finest online education libraries around. Those of you who know me know that that's what I'm known for. It has 40 videos on all kinds of tax and financial topics. It has 370 blogs on, on you name it. I'm going to give you an example. I just did a blog on what kind of records you have to keep uh, for the IRS. I have another blog on all the tax scams and other scams I've been noticing in North America and how to avoid them. I just did a blog a little while back on how to evaluate nursing homes for parents. And I had somebody email me thanking me because he had to get, he had to get his parents into an independent living facility. And we just did that. I did one on gambling and how, how you can deduct gambling losses against gambling winnings and just much more. I mean, there's just blogs on just about anything you can think of. The byproduct of using TaxBot is that you will find more deductions and save thousands of dollars in taxes. And don't take my word for it, because we're going to give you a guarantee. Try it for 30 days. We guarantee, this is our money-back insurance policy, that you will get times what you paid in the first 30 days or you get all your money back. What's that? 2,000% rate of return guaranteed. No questions asked. I mean, where are you going to get that anywhere? In addition... Tax, our customers love TaxBot. It has a four and a half star rating in the App Store. It was just rated number one in the country. In fact, it was it's in North America. It includes Canada too as the best expense tracking software by top ten reviews, which is a member of, which is associated with Consumer Reports. We are used by tens of thousands of happy customers. We are recommended by real estate associations across the country, the National Society of Accountants, and New York Stock Exchange billion dollar sales companies. Now, normally, TaxBot is $19.99 a month, but Networking University has a tremendous discount for you by contract. It is 50% off if you are a networking member. It is only half price if you go through this, uh, this particular webinar. So it's only $9.99 a month, and that is it. It will not go up, but it's only available for about a week. After that, we shut off the pricing. That's what I mean by limited time. But for now, it's only $9.99 a month. It will not go up. And by the way, it's not even $9.99 a month. Why not? Because it's tax deductible. So it's really only about $5.40 a month after taxes. What's that, about $0.18 cents a day? That's all it is. And so you're not going to beat that with a stick. Uh, in addition, if you want even better savings, you can do it for the year. Instead of $9.99 a month and have to do a check every month or a credit card charge every month, you can do it for a whole year and you save two months. So you do that for $100 a year and you still get the same unconditional guarantee in the first 30 days, if you don't get 20 times what you paid, you get back your money. That's simple. You can cancel any time. To take advantage of it, which I don't see why you wouldn't, you want to go to www.networkingtimes.com forward slash special. That's www.networkingtimes.com forward slash special. Or you can go to nt.taxbot.com. That's nt.taxbot.com. Click on sign me up and you get it at half price, okay? That's nt.taxbot.com. And by the way, those of you who do it within the next 24 hours, you're going to get our premium service for free, which includes, which we charge $259 for. And here's what it includes. Unlimited tax questions with an accountant. I'm talking CPAs, enrolled agents, people like that, ex-IRS agents. How much would you pay for your accountant for one question? You get unlimited questions for a year. Our audit 911 service to advise you in case you get audited. And if that's not enough, though, if you want, they'll review your last year's Schedule C for ways to save in the future. And all of their professional services are backed by a $1 million insurance company, 
All of that is free for only $9.99 a month or $100 a year. And if you still have questions, we're going to be sending you a copy of our ebook after the webinar, Targeted Tax Breaks for a Home-Based Business, which will answer a lot of questions. Again, you want to go to www.networkingtimes.com or nt.taxbot.com. Click on Sign Me Up. And if you do it soon enough, you'll get our, our premium version included. And you're not, going to, you're not going to beat that with a stick. The bottom line, folks, is do something. If TaxBot is not for you, fine. You want to get another expense tracker? You want to get a, a fireproof, waterproof safe? Hey, go for it. But do something. Because doing nothing is not acceptable. You'll, there's too many penalties involved. There's too much risk. Just do something. All right, let me do this. Let me turn this back to uh, Chris for questions. Chris? I'm here looking to get the first question from Leslie, and Leslie wants to know, uh, do you have to have your business officially set up like an LLC or something like that in order to qualify for these deductions? That's the interesting point. You do not, Leslie, have to do that. You can be a sole proprietor with no problem. You do not have to be an LLC. You don't have to be anything. Okay. Uh, next question is, oh, what if I have my own business, but I'm working for someone else, like as an independent contractor? Will these same kinds of deductions apply? Absolutely. It applies to any business. You don't, you don't have to be a home-based business. You could be a, a electrician. You could be a lawyer. You could be a doctor. You could be a consultant. doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, next question is from Mary. She, this, yeah, I think you kind of covered this. That she wants to know, is TaxBot itself deductible? And how so? And can I use the TaxBot to deduct my TaxBot subscription? How does that work? The answer is absolutely. Everything I do is deductible. I'm kind of like a walking deduction. Tax spot is fully tax deductible by everyone in business. Fully tax deductible. In fact, you can even deduct it as an employee uh, for a lot of reasons as well. It's fully tax deductible by, by everyone. Okay. And uh, Chuck wants to know, what should I look for in choosing an accountant? That's interesting that you asked that. Um, in, get my book, Lower Your Taxes Big Time. I, it's funny. I have a whole chapter that I just added this year on this year's version on, on 24 questions to ask an accountant. I mean, a lot of different things. Like, um, uh, I, first of all, you want to look for you, uh, how long you've been in business. Do you want a rookie or do you want somebody who's been there for quite a while? Have you ever been censured by uh, the, your association of some type? Do you specialize in taxes or do you do other things? Are they an insurance agent, for example? Uh, what designations do you have? Uh, what are the home-based business owners do you have? How many do you have in, in, my, in, my, in a home-based business who are network marketing? Do you, do you want somebody who doesn't have any other clients like you, or do you want somebody who's got a lot of experience? You know, you want to you want to get a couple of uh, – there's a number of things. There's like 24 questions. And so it's all in my book, Lower Your Taxes Big Time. It's an Appendix B, in fact. Okay. Uh, one question that comes up every single week is, if I couldn't uh, – participate in this webinar, can I still check this information out after this session is over? And the answer is yes, folks. What you need to do is always sign up for the webinars. We'll be sending out an email afterwards, saying which will give you a place to find a replay of this so you can take advantage of the information that can be provided, just in case something comes up and you can't make it. So it's kind of like an insurance policy. Make sure you do that. And um, by the way, the specials are always available at networkingtimes.com forward slash special. So let's see if we have any more questions coming in. Sometimes the internet's a little fickle and the questions don't come in quickly enough. So folks, if you haven't got it in yet, try it again. Questions, Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N-S, questions at networkingtimes.com. So I don't have anything that's popping into my head that that uh, people Chris, typically have. some questions in the chat room. Oh, how about that? So, hold on. Josephine's going to um, send us some questions. All right. All right. So, let me find... Oh, there are no... Uh, one moment. Nope. So, okay. Uh, I do want to mention, by the way, they, somebody sent me an email, on uh, like a chat thing. You can yeah. use TaxBot on different devices. Not only is it deductible, but you can use it on the same account. Uh, I have an iPhone. My wife has a Droid. You can use it on the same account with the different devices. No problem. Here's a question that comes up all the time. I love this tax bond situation, but the year's already started. Is how do I get my receipts that I've already spent into the t the tracker? And also, is it possible to get the uh, mileage from the trips I've made 
every single week? Yeah, you know, that's really, really good question. TaxBot takes that into account. First of all, TaxBot's very editable. You can go on the web and you can put everything in manually. That's number one. Number two, as far as the trips go, TaxBot has a very cool feature. Let's say you forgot to add certain trips. Or you want to put some things in manual because you, you didn't do it before. You didn't have a, a, a tracker. You can actually put the beginning address of where you went on your trip and the ending address. It will automatically compute not only the mileage, but will show you a route that you can take your mouse, adjust, and it will recalculate the mileage. And then uh, if that's okay, you click accept, and then it will store it for you on TaxBot. Yeah, that's a, that's a powerful way to get caught up, folks. So if you like the program and you want to put the expenses and the traveling that you had prior to today, why not? You have it available to you. Um, somebody else was asking me about uh, whether or not they can use this from uh, their iPads as well as their uh, phones. Yes, this works on the iPad as well as the Droid. The only place it doesn't work yet is the BlackBerry. Uh, but it does work on the iPad. It does work on the Droid. It does work on the iPad tablet. It works on the uh, all those things. As I said, you can use this on several different devices, all with the same account. Okay. Um, Chris, here's uh, one. Uh, I, I was I I got one from uh, from Garth who wants to confirm. He was told he can only direct my deduct mileage on the outbound leg of a trip to see a client. Is that true? That is not true. You you may you can deduct your mileage to the client and back if you if if you don't assuming you don't go to the client every day. <laughs> Some of you do it very, you know, relatively, you know, unusually, like once a month or once or two months or something like that. Or you do it for a couple times during the week, and then you don't see that client again until next week. If it's a temporary business stop, you can go to the client and back, and it's deductible. As long as your home, as long as your home is your principal place of business for that business. Okay. Sandy, so, well, I got a question here from Gina, who wanted to know. She said, "I got this at the last webinar. Do I get a ta targeted tax break?" Uh, if you got, I don't know what webinar you're on, but if you are on, certainly if you're on networking times, you will get that. Uh, it depends on the webinar and whether they provided that or not. Uh, if you didn't get it and you're, you're on here now, if you will call networking times, get get the ad, get the email information, we will send it out to you. Yeah, in fact, the easiest way to do it is just to email it to questions at networkingtimes.com. We'll get that question and we'll just process it along with the other ones that come in. Well, it looks like we've uh, approached the top of the hour. We covered an inordinate amount of information this webinar, as usual, and we've answered the standard questions that we get, and we've handled as many questions as we as we had time for that came in over the internet. If you have got a question, you know, feel free to send to questions at networkingtimes.com. We'll do our best to get an answer for you as well. I want to say that we couldn't do what we do here at Networking University without the amazing faculty that we've put together and people exactly like Sandy and Sandy himself who have spent absolutely decades on learning the inside scoop and the shortcuts, which is actually doing it right in the first place. And he's taught it to us and distilled all this information. Thank you so much, Sandy, for your contribution to the university and to educating all the folks out there in the best ways to handle their taxes and their record keeping. I'm very honored to be, to be associated with Networking Times. Great organization. Okay, folks, well, this is the conclusion of the webinar. Uh, if I recommend that you be a savvy networker. We're here every Wednesday during uh, school time, and the way to find us is networkingtimes.com forward slash university. You can always find out what's coming down the pike in the next couple of weeks. And, uh, of course, sign up and be a savvy networker. Bring your own entire team in as well and take advantage of the amazing information that our faculty put together every week for the students all over the world. Again, thanks very much, and we'll catch everybody here next week. Until then, have a wonderful week. Good night, all.